Mary, Mary, how does your garden grow? Well, when we're talking about Mary Proctor's, we're talking about a garden like you've never seen before. It's been said that one man's trash is another man's treasure. Nothing is thrown away here. Nowhere is that more true than here in Tallahassee, Florida, at the outdoor studio of Mary Proctor. Watch your stills, baby. Better known as Missionary Mary. My yard is packed with stuff. Half of the people of Tallahassee came and told me their junk. And you know they say, oh, just like Mikey, this is what they say. Oh, give it to Mikey. She, you, she. <laughs> He'll eat it. He'll eat it. So they was like, give it to Mary. Go take all your junk over to Mary, and we'll see what she do. You might say Mary raises recycling to an art form. When someone dumped old bicycles in her yard, they became part of this masterpiece. The original owner saw it and wanted them back. Missionary Mary said no. They said we will run her out of business. Jesus said, I'll help her find another. Look closely at her paintings and you will find a little bit of everything. If old shoes happen to be lying around, they find their way into her work, both literally and figuratively. If you hadn't walked in my shoe, you can't tell my story. You can't tell it. Mary's story is one of tragedy and perseverance. For our purposes, it begins in 1995 with the death of the beloved grandmother who raised her. My grandma didn't need a whip. She had to look it too. But mama would look back at you and stretch her eyes. Oh, man, you know then that something was coming your way when you got home. So my grandma had to look. She didn't have to get no whip. She was, she was the woman. When her grandmother was killed in a house fire, along with two other relatives, Mary was devastated. Then she says, God spoke to her. Back then, Mary didn't know she was a missionary. But when God told her to paint... This is just a fraction of what she painted. Anything in her way was transformed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my husband's car. I asked my husband to move the car because it was in my way. He wouldn't move it, so I put on there, I put that's the devil's car. <laughs> Boy, he got mad with me because that's a drive of a car. Art helped her survive a series of trials and tribulations. I use my hand a lot of time. It feels good. It just feels so good. So the painting, after mm -hmm. you lost your relatives in the fire, yeah. was your way of healing yourself? Myself. As her yard began to fill up, Mary Proctor became an object of ridicule in Tallahassee. Jesus threw a shield around me. This is my shield. One day, a woman from New York happened to be driving by. Mary heard the squeal of brakes. And she said, this is folk art. Mary decided the woman was crazy. I told my husband, Ma, I said, uh, Tyrone, I said, white folks didn't come to steal. <laughs> but her visitor was an art dealer with a checkbook. And Mary, who had never sold a painting in her life, was on her way to the Big Apple. When she saw her work in a Soho gallery, she couldn't believe the price tags. 2500 with two doors, rest of them were $5,000, 7500 and up. And you know that woman sold them things? Among Mary's most ambitious projects was this one, door-sized portraits of each U.S. president made with Coke cans. She really does start her day reading the Bible and drinking a Coke. <laughs> Mark Martin, director of public and media relations for the soft drink giant, arranged to exhibit the doors at Coca-Cola headquarters, where Mary was scheduled to unveil the 43rd president in November 2000. But that's when Florida happened. Because of the contested election, she had to leave him temporarily faceless. I kept thinking it was Gore one minute, then next Bush. The rest, as they say, is history. George W. Bush was sworn in, and missionary Mary Proctor was on the map.